Hanuman is a god in Hindu beliefs and occupies a significant role in the vast Hindu legends. This figure is linked with colossal strength once released by the gods as a sanction. Monkey Man narrates the tale of a lad who senses Hanuman's might within himself, just as his mother recounted during his youth, and wields this force to avenge her wrongful demise. The youngster gazes at Hanuman's image in the tome, while his mother narrates the saga enchantingly, explaining how Hanuman nourished himself with wild berries. However, one day he spotted a mango in the wilderness and plucked it from its branch. Yet by error, he consumed the sun, mistaking it for the mango. Due to his serious blunder, Hanuman was summoned before the Divine Assembly who divested him of his abilities. In an electrified crowd wagering on two combatants, a contender donning a simian mask endures a severe thrashing from his adversary. Spectators deposit their wagering funds into a timber container toted by a small youngster, just as the Fight Club proprietor, Tiger, seizes the microphone. He proclaims the triumph of fighter King Cobra, while in the backdrop, Monkey Man dejectedly proceeds to the locker area. The numerous hits to the face result in oral hemorrhaging, and the kid rinses his visage to eradicate the blood as he recalls the evening law enforcement assailed and incinerated his hamlet. The kid snaps out of his sorrowful recollections when he detects Tiger's voice in the changing quarters. Tiger faces the kid and hands him a scant sum for his participation in the bout. The kid begs for a higher payment, but Tiger dismisses him, advising him to strive for victory next time to make more. The rising spiritual and political figure, Baba Shakti, is becoming well-liked by the masses. The kid views the broadcast and is seated in a modest diner when a lad named Lucky solicits him for cash in return for vital news. Upon requesting a beverage and settling the bill, he listens to the boy divulge details about a woman named Queenie who runs a lavish eatery and is an assertive individual. The narrative transitions as Queenie, the same woman, declines to donate to a panhandler. And inadvertently, she flings a drink at him. The panhandler cunningly captures her focus amidst the commotion and pilfers her purse. The wallet passes through several hands before finally landing with the kid, who rummages through it seeking useful information. The card within points him to a renowned eatery, and the kid lingers outside for a considerable time awaiting admission. At last, a gentleman escorts him to Queenie. The kid hands over her wallet, claiming he wrestled with two panhandlers to retrieve it and requests employment at her establishment as compensation. He adamantly declines any cash and consents to undertake any task at the diner indefinitely. He persuades Queenie of his resilience by displaying his scarred palms. Abruptly, his gaze falls upon a photo of his mother's slayer, Officer Rana, alongside Queenie, triggering memories of the night his mother was set ablaze. It is Queenie's voice that snaps him out of his reverie as she concurs to employ him as a janitor. The youngster begins employment and encounters Alfonso at the diner the following day. He provides various herbs to the affluent patrons at the diner and proposes any assistance to the youngster. Some days afterward, the youngster arrives at a pawn shop and requests a unique pawn to eat. The vendor recognizes it's a clandestine signal and instructs the youngster to escort him to the adjacent residence. The individual in the dwelling trades unauthorized arms. The kid picks a firearm suited for his task and departs. In his shift the subsequent day, he observes Queenie degrading a juvenile, Sita, for objecting to the harsh patrons. Queenie accuses her of excess theatrics and summons the kid indoors. She instructs the kid to face away from the scene and hands Alfonso, a substantial sum to procure narcotics for patrons as she ushers in the girls. As the kid observes Alfonso departing, he tails him and proposes friendship. In doing so, they could amass considerable wealth. The conclusion is evidence, he speaks of his combat league and suggests Alfonso wager on his loss. By this means, he shall triumph. Alfonso gambles on his downfall and secures some funds in the ensuing brawl at the club. In exchange, Alfonso escorts him to the opulent salon, where he distributes narcotics to the most affluent clientele. The eatery presents a selection card, and the patron picks the companions from Manu. It gazes as a gentleman escorts a young lady to his chamber. Subsequently, Alfonso extends an offer to transport him in his luxurious car. It turns out to be an extremely speedy auto rickshaw. They zoom across the entire city in the dead of night. The following day, while dispensing beverages in the same chamber, Kid observes the identical girl, Sita, seated with a patron who commenced acting improperly towards her. Kid recalls the evening his mother passed away. There were upheavals in the hamlet, and the inhabitants were prompted to evacuate, but they defied and remained until they incinerated the entire village. Kid couldn't endure the sight of the girl being mistreated and bolted from the chamber nearly sprinting. He settles in the fresh air through the eatery's rear exit when a wandering dog appears beside him. He shares a morsel from the refuse when Sida approaches. She discerns his distress in the chamber and suggests he abandon this line of work if he's unable to withstand such incidents. While responding to her, he inquires about the tattoo of a quail on her arm, which symbolizes her desire to sing melodious tunes. Over the next few days, he owns his marksmanship with the firearm. He also trains his canine to carry the gun and pass it to him via the rear entrance. He persists in brawling and serving at the eatery concurrently until he masters his aim with the armament and feels primed for the onslaught. 
On the decisive day, he transports libations to the salon alongside Alfonso. He gains admittance to the exclusive zone for the initial occasion where he intends to eliminate his quarry. Promptly, he surveys the vicinity and identifies Officer Rana seated with Sita. Kid stealthily blends the lavatory cleanser in Rana's narcotic. He dusts the substance on Sita's limb and inhales it. But as soon as it touches his nose, it begins to bleed. He becomes anxious and rushes to rinse his nose in the restroom. Abruptly, Kid aims his firearm at him, recalling the murder of his mother. Regrettably, Rana perceives his shaky hands and dislodges his grip. The gun skids away. Concurrently, the patrons discern the sound of a gunshot and hasten out of the hall. Conversely, Kid endeavors to overpower Rana with all his might, yet he continues to be struck. Repeatedly, he cannot secure the gun from another individual, and it escapes his grasp. Rana assaults the kid and drives a blade into his leg. Kid extracts the blade and plunges it into Rana's spine. Subsequently, he seeks to flee the establishment and navigates towards the parking lot. Alfonso is already mingling with the throng. Kid hops into the rickshaw, brings Alfonso aboard and zooms off at breakneck speed. They repeatedly swerve around police vehicles. A chopper gyrates overhead in pursuit. They halt the rickshaw and make a dash, yet the constabulary is on their heels. Ultimately, he's apprehended, while Alfonso, laden with remorse for deserting Kid, slips away. Kid comes to in the patrol wagon, shackled and flanked by numerous officers. He lunges at the constables before they can react. Seizing their firearm, he wounds the officers and unlatches the van. Kid bolts and ducks into a house of ill repute as the constabulary scours for him like predators in every nook. He scurries across rooftops when a marksman in the chopper commences shooting. Plummeting into the water, Kid's mind wanders back to his youth, to times his mother led him to a stream. She would often remind him of his immense strength, akin to the mythical Hanuman, capable of vanquishing foes. Abruptly, his mother gazes at the lines etched in his palms, suggesting they chart the course of his destiny. She queries what aspirations he harbors. Awakening, Kid finds himself encircled by a sea of faces. They've tended to his gunshot wounds and offered sanctuary. Among them are eunuchs, and the leader, Alpha, urges him to recuperate there, preparing for vengeance once his strength returns. It is impatient to act, but aware that the police are on his trail, he opts to stay concealed with these individuals. Meanwhile, Shakti Baba's following swells by the day, his fame escalating. Rana pays him a visit, intent on hunting down his assailant, yet Shakti counsels him to dismiss this pursuit and concentrate on the imminent elections. Kid watches Munich's festivities. They gather around the blaze, exchanging laughs as Ostad Shakir performs on the tabla. As darkness falls, Kid finds no joy in their revelry or humor. He withdraws to solitude. Alpha approaches, perceives his torment, and leads him to their hallowed tree. The area is illuminated with countless lamps at night. Alpha perceives the wrath of retribution overwhelming Kid. He underscores the significance of his fury and suffering, which fuels his quest for revenge. He promises that his anguish will transform into relief on the day he exacts his revenge. Then, he plucks a blossom from the hallowed tree and grinds it into powder in his palm. The powder serves as a reminder of his wrath. He flings the powder at Kid's face with a puff, and suddenly Kid's memory flashes back to his youth, witnessing his village ablaze. Amidst intense torment, he experiences a sharp pain in his heart. Hanuman rips open his attire to reveal his chest. Mimicking this, he rips his shirt open to sense the inferno within. On that day, the entire hamlet was engrossed in a marionette portrayal of Hanuman and Sita. When the constabulary arrived under Shakti Baba's command, desiring the village's territory, he mandated the officers to expel the villagers from their abodes by force. The officers commenced incinerating the dwellings and slaying blameless villagers in their path. Rana, orchestrating the entire assault, gazes at the kid's mother. Sensing Rana's vile intent, she implores her son to conceal himself on the rooftop and remain hidden at all costs. Shortly after, Rana storms into the residence and starts to touch her inappropriately. In defense, she retrieves a concealed blade and stabs it into Rana's flesh. Rana violates his mother and then commands his aide to set her ablaze. Kid, peering through a tiny gap in the roof, rushes to his mother's aid to shield her from the flames. Yet, she is powerless to act. In his desperate attempt to rescue her, he also scorches his hands. The police ignite the entire village. Alpha observes the scars on Kid's palms and motivates him to harness this agony as his strength. It will become his force to combat the establishment. Meanwhile, Shakti Baba engages in yoga at his abode. Kid gradually recuperates and gears up for retribution. He strikes the heavy bag and falters in his routine when Master Shakir perceives his reluctance and initiates a beat on the tabla, providing a cadence. The sound of the tabla sustains him momentarily. The other eunuchs applaud while he strikes the punching bag. The pace accelerates over time. Eventually, he exhausts and can't match the swift tempo of Matsur Shakir's tabla. Shakti instigates upheavals across the nation, sparking conflict between the majorities and minorities. Conversely, Kid dedicates himself to rigorous training. He soothes his psyche with the tabla's rhythm. Then, 
The moment arrives when Master Shakir ceases his tabla play. Yet Kid doesn't falter. They recognize Kid's readiness for the significant battle. On that day, Alpha is confronted with a government ultimatum to vacate their dwelling or settle the outstanding dues. The sum is so vast that they can't manage to pay it, nor do they have another refuge. Kid overhears this and resolves to aid in his own manner. He supplicates and pilfers the cash from the donation box. Meanwhile, after an extended period, Alfonso notices the placards on the wall publicizing a bout between Monkey Man and Cobra at the Fight Club. At the same time, a young lad, Lucky, hands over cash to a bookie wagering on Monkey Man's victory. A massive throng convenes to spectate the match in the arena that day, and Tiger is convinced of Monkey Man's impending loss. He collects a hefty sum from the onlookers and wagers on Monkey Man's downfall. The match commences and in a twist from previous encounters, Monkey Man topples Cobra with the initial strike. Tiger pushes for a continuation of the fight to keep up the excitement. Yet, the Cobra remains motionless despite their attempts. Tiger beckons another combatant to challenge Monkey Man and sustain the spectacle. After a series of blows, this fighter too concedes, and the crowd erupts in cheers for Monkey Man. They equate his might to that of Hanuman, and Alfonso observes the bout, swelling with pride for his comrade. The lad garners a substantial sum from Kid's triumph. He deposits the entire amount in a sack and drapes it over the effigy. The eunuchs discover a message within the sack urging them to embrace their true selves. On the vibrant occasion of Holi, as the nation indulges in its diverse celebrations, Monkey Man earmarks this day for his ultimate act of vengeance. Shakti Baba reaches the hotel that evening, greeted by a large assembly. Concurrently, Queenie insists on flawless arrangements for her clientele. Rana oversees the safeguarding, while Shakti occupies the Grand Salon. Id infiltrates the hotel and incapacitates the guards in the corridor. Subsequently, numerous gathered eunuchs make their way to the parking lot. Simultaneously, Kid navigates to the culinary area and overpowers any staff who challenge him using cutlery and strainers. Then, he ignites the zone and proceeds. He encounters various guards in the lift. Utilizing his formidable might and tactics, he ends the life of a guard. Abruptly, the attendees in the salon become alert to peril as some lights extinguish. As the elevator light flickers and the doors part, a body tumbles out. Behind the fallen man, Kid ignites petite firecrackers and hurls them into the throng. He carves a path through the chaos, overcoming adversaries that block his way. Concurrently, the crowd hastily vacates the hall. Abruptly, the lift doors slide open again, and a squad of security guards encircles Kid, poised to strike. At that critical juncture, Alpha, flanked by numerous eunuchs, storms into the hall. Reinvigorated, Kid and his allies launch an all-out assault. They overpower numerous foes, yet Alpha cautions Kid not to linger and urges him to pursue his true adversary, Rana. Kid dashes for the lift, spotting Queenie aiming her firearm at him. Concurrently, Sita clatters a platter onto Queenie's cranium, toppling her. Kid severs Queenie's digit to unlock the clandestine chamber, requiring her fingerprint for entry. Clutching the digit, Kid commences his hunt for Rana. Rana belittles Kid's vigor, assailing him with full might. Kid endures several blows before rage engulfs him. He retaliates, pummeling Rana into submission. Seizing Rana's locks, Kid smashes his head against the ground repeatedly and lands blows to his visage. Kid's memory of Rana setting his mother ablaze fuels his fury, and he assaults Rana with footwear, continuing to strike him until his demise. The hotel's security opts for self-preservation over intervening. Kid is haunted by the vision of his childhood home in flames, weeping before the ruins, aware that Shakti Baba orchestrates the underlying animosity. Ascending in the elevator, Kid seeks the mastermind behind the atrocities. Confronting Shakti Baba, Kid demands recognition and an explanation for his mother's murder. Shakti Baba, feigning nonchalance, presents his sandals to Kid, attempting to appear unassuming. Abruptly, Kid's focus shifts upon hearing the whir of a helicopter. Seizing the moment, Shakti lunges at Kid, wounding him with concealed nails. Kid, however, thwarts a second strike and fatally wounds Shakti with his own sharpened nails. In that instant, Kid envisions himself as the mighty Hanuman from the Ramayan, endowed with immense strength. A sense of tranquility washes over him, and in his mind's eye he is reunited with his mother. Together they vocalize a melodious tune, walking on the mountain with this serene vision. The narrative concludes. Don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications to catch more videos like this. Thank you for watching.